Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Find Out What's in Polenta's Forest. I'm Polenta, and this is my forest. Grab yourself a glass of water or a cup of tea and spend the next few minutes with me. And like I always tell you, don't believe everything you hear. Do your own research and check your facts. As soon as the butterflies bring us on in, we will get started with some real news. Yes, we are. <laughs> Don't you want to know what my butterflies are saying? Don't you want to know why my butterflies are talking? <laughs> Check it out. Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody. We are going to get started with Whitney Houston. Now, on the last show, we talked about Whitney Houston movie that's in the works, movie slash documentary. Well, guess what I just found out? A Whitney Houston hologram was going to be used on The Voice. So, listen to this headline. A much anticipated performance by Whitney Houston in a hologram form will not air on the NBC's voice after all. The performance, which would have aired with a late singer singing with Christina Aguilera, no, they're not going to air it now. Uh, the high tech duet has been canceled for technical reasons. But according to this article, it says that Pat Houston, the late superstar's sister-in-law, explained that the holograms are new technology that takes time to perfect. And after reviewing the holograms performance, she said the decision was made that it felt, you know, it just didn't represent Whitney's perfection and it didn't give her fans the legacy that it deserved. You know what? I think that was a good call. You know, where is the respect for dead people? People that have passed on. You know, we just got into this big thing yesterday with the cemetery and the vineyard that's going to be built there. And I talked about the distilled spirits and everything. I'm going to have to look more into that because that bothered me for a while. That still doesn't sound right to me. And now we've got past Whitney. Now we're going to get back into Prince. Now at the Billboard Music Awards, uh, Madonna dedicated a big, you know, a big performance to Prince. And I believe she's saying nothing compares to you. Um, and then Stevie Wonder joined in. And this is a beautiful picture. Ah, I don't have my backing here. Let me see if I can work this so you can see the picture. But it's a real nice picture. It looks really cool. Hopefully you can get a good look at that. But whoever took that picture did a great job. That's a cool picture. Well, I didn't actually get a chance to watch the award show. I haven't looked at it yet. But I heard from several people that Madonna did a great job. But there's a lot of people that were upset. They were tweeting and ranting and raving and all kinds of other stuff. Well, I'm glad personally that somebody had her back because listen to this. The Billboard boss backs Madonna on Prince Tribute. The executive producer of Sunday's Billboard Music Awards is defending the decision to have Madonna pay homage to Prince, which has been met with some criticism online and sparked and sparked a change.org petition. You know what, man, like I keep on saying, I don't believe everything, but I believe anything because you people got too much time on your hands to whine about crazy mess. You got to be kidding me. You have a change.org petition against Madonna? Paying homage to Prince? You got to be dang kidding me. She's paying homage to Prince. She's paying respects to a musician that we all loved and we're all missing. 
and you people have time to gripe about you don't like her performance and it's got you know what that's just <laughs> that's just ridiculous and let me move on to some more ridiculous stuff listen to this you know anytime somebody passes away I don't know why he didn't have a will because apparently he didn't but anytime somebody passes away you always have the creepy crawlies slithering on out of the woodwork. Now listen, two possible heirs file claim over Prince's estate. Two more, there's probably going to be two million more showing up. Two more <laughs> heirs of the late megastar Prince filed a motion in Carver County Court District to intervene in his $100 million estate. Now, what I would like to know is, these two possible heirs that have filed a claim when Prince was alive, did they ever even talk to him? Did Prince even know that they existed? You know what? It's real funny to me how when you're alive, people don't communicate with you. They don't have anything to do with you. But the minute you fall ill or you drop dead, now all of a sudden they want some of your money. Now all of a sudden they love you. <laughs> they were your best friend. Oh, they have all kinds of excuses why they didn't talk to you. You know what? The prince is dead and gone now. So whatever happens, happens. But I think that it's really disgusting that after people pass away, all the little slithering slitherings rise up and want to be known and their voice wants to be heard. That's why I'm always saying, tell your family how much you love them. Men broken bridges and broken fences and make up for whatever you have to make up for. Because once they're gone, it's too late. And everything isn't always about money. Ugh, I could go on, but I'm going to move on to something else. Okay, now, also, yesterday, which I think was episode 17, I touched, touched a little bit on the transgender bathroom issue. Well, here's something new that you guys can get all hot and bothered about. <laughs> Altering birth certificates is the next battle in transgender rights. Now, this is going to be actually in the transgender rights fight. That's the proper way to say it. So, um, this is going to carry on for quite some time because this is something new. The problem here is when transgender people switch over to being from a man to a woman, now that they've changed their name and they've changed their sex, well, if they've changed their name and changed their sex, why does their birth certificate still have their old name and their old sex? If they're this complete new person, then they need to be that complete new person 100%. What sense does it make for them to be living as a female and their birth certificate still says male. I mean, if you really sit back and think about it, it's kind of ridiculous. Now, I'm sure that this is going to tick off a lot of people by me saying this, and I'm not trying to start anything with anybody, but you know, I think at the end of the day, we could all use a little bit of transgender education because people are afraid and they don't understand which brings on violence and ignorance and people for some reason seem to think that being gay or lesbian is contagious. You act as if it's some kind of a germ that's going to get you and it's some something that you can't wash off. And that is not the case. Trans, gender, gay, lesbian, bisexual, whatever the case may be, they are people just like anybody else. And in my personal opinion, it just seems like they want to be respected and recognized as people just like you and me. I'm just saying, 
So moving right along, but wait a minute, actually I'm not done yet because a girl was banned from a prom, uh, let's see, at, at, in Pennsylvania. So here it says a central Pennsylvania high school student was barred from attending a prom at her Catholic high school because she showed up wearing a suit. Now, the funny thing to me is she showed up wearing a suit and obviously she's uh, a lesbian, you know. Well, my question is if in fact she showed up wearing a suit and she was a straight female that just showed up wearing a suit, would they still have kicked her out? That's my question. Moving right along, we talked about the drought in Zimbabwe and them selling off their wildlife and stuff to China. Well, listen to this. A prosperous Mexican farm just sucked up the water, leaving the villages dry. We've got to do something about this water issue. It makes no sense to have a planet that has water everywhere and we can't get water to these places that are lacking. And listen to this, this is gonna knock your socks off. India sets a new high, 123 degrees. Did you hear me? You know how hot it was in Sacramento, California today? It was 80 something. And we're sweating and moaning and groaning about the heat. A city in Western India has suffered through the country's highest record temperature. A scorching 123.8 degrees Fahrenheit. That is unbelievable. And moving on with the heat, get this. I'm going to show you this picture. Don't know how well you'll be able to see it, but you animal lovers are going to love it when I tell you this next story. Because how many times do you see people leaving their animals in the car? Think about that for a second. How many times have you gone into a grocery store and you see somebody's got their little dog or their two dogs in the car? And they don't even have the windows down. It's ridiculous. So listen to this. Dogs wait in car while the driver performs errands. Well, guess what? An assembly bill is now going to allow Californians to smash the car windows and break out the windows when they see an animal in a vehicle that is too hot are too cold without facing a lawsuit. Bam! <laughs> so you know what? If you're having a bad day, I know this is awful, but I just gotta say. <laughs> so now, if you're out somewhere and you're having a bad day and you just wanna break up something, just cruise around the parking lots of, uh, let's say, what's our famous store that people wanna always make fun of? Walmart. Just cruise around a Walmart parking lot. You're sure to see somebody that's left their dog in the car. <laughs> so now you can just grab a brick and just bust out the window and just save your furry friends. And you know what? You won't get in trouble. How cool is that? <laughs> now I'm not telling you to go and just bust out windows, but you know, but you see people all the time leaving their dogs in the car, which is just ridiculous. Okay, now getting to the big bang of the evening. This is something that is really, really interesting because you know, I am all into medical technology and medical science. So first of all, one thing that you probably want to check out is the Covanta energy plant. They are turning pills into energy. Just like when you recycle bottles and cans and everything, well, they're recycling your old pills. And FYI, do not flush your old pills down the toilet. They now have, well, they always tell you to turn them back in to the doctor if you're not going to use them. But they have this little recycling plant where you can turn in your pills. So far, they have recycled 
enough pills to power 20,000 homes. That is awesome. Technology is absolutely beautiful. I love it. Absolutely amazing. So, the big bang of the show. I've talked to you about changing your eye color and the iris implants. I've talked to you about the uterus implant. And in Sweden, they've had great success with it. Well, check this out. Check this out. You're not going to believe what I found out. They have done the first penis transplant. I thought this was amazing, and I would love it if I could have a serious interview with this man. A man whose penis was removed due to cancer has received the first penis transplant in the United States at a Massachusetts general hospital. Now, Thomas Manning is a bank curi um, courier, and he underwent the 15-hour transplant operation on May 8th and May 9th. Now, the organ, of course, came from a deceased donor, but after the surgery, he said that he hardly experienced any pain at all, and he was feeling fine. Now, Dr. Curtis L. Uh, Trullo is a plastic and reconstructive surgeon, and he's also the leader of the surgical team, and he stated that they are cautiously optimistic, but this is uncharted waters for them. So you know they're excited because anytime doctors stumble upon some new medical miracle and they're the first to do it, they're excited. It's a big rush for them. But the surgery is experimental and is part of a research program where the ultimate goal is to help combat veterans with severe pelvic injuries as well as cancer patients. Now, Dr. Citrullo said that, um, that if, if all goes as planned, normal urination should be possible for Mr. Manning within a few weeks and normal sexual function within a few weeks to months. Now, Mr. Manning is welcoming questions and he wants to speak about this publicly to dispel the shame and the stigma that's associated with genital cancer and injuries. So I think um, that is just absolutely, absolutely amazing. You know, and I often and I often reference Twilight Zone because you know you always see Twilight Zone with all these cool new things, and that's the era that we're moving into. Like I've said, pretty soon you're going to be able to just snap on a leg, snap on a limb, and just keep on moving like it's nothing. So that is absolutely amazing. And let me see here. Um, oh, here's some good news. And I'm going to end the show with this. Now, if you guys have Netflix, you know that there's a show on called The House of Cards. Well, check this out. Robin Wright and Kevin Spacey are the main characters of the show, right? Well, you know how there's been this war going on about equal pay, equal pay? Well, Robin Wright demanded to earn equal pay and she got it robin wright demanded that she got the same pay as co-star kevin spacey and she said that if she didn't she was gonna go public well to make a long story short she got it so congratulations to robin wright and that ladies and gentlemen is going to be our show for today so thank you so much for joining me. I am so very grateful for anything. Stay tuned. There's going to be many, many, many more episodes of Find Out What's in Polenta's Forest to come. So please keep on watching. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Go to my website, polentaartforest.com and buy my book, Angels Passing Through. And on that note, we are going to take you out of here with my favorite tune, One Love. I will see you next time. Find out what's in Palentis Forest. God bless you all. And have a fabulous, safe Memorial Day weekend. Good night. <laughs>